Uh, <clears throat> recognize uh, Representative Self from Texas, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to build on uh, the comments of my uh, colleague from North Carolina on artificial intelligence. Uh, because this hearing is supposed to talk about the creation of new chemicals, the new uses of existing chemicals. And AI, uh, this committee here has heard testimony from other witnesses that AI plus quantum computing will yield us uh, progress of not 10 times, not 100 times, but 10,000 times. So I understand that it takes uh, two things. You need a data set. Well, you guys have been dealing with chemistry for 100 plus years now, so you have a data set, I think, and it requires a known structure in this case. And if there's anything that has a known structure, it's chemistry, it's chemicals. Uh, so we're already seeing gigantic jumps in medicine, developing new medicines through AI. So I want to kind of uh, talk about two things, the creation of new chemicals. Why could we not use AI, artificial intelligence, machine learning? Because you're talking about tweaking. I think one of you talked about tweaking molecules. That looks to me to be right in the wheelhouse of AI. Uh, so let's talk about creation of, this, uh, of new chemicals or tweaking. Who would like to take that on? First. I believe that was my comment, so I'm happy to, uh, to expand on that. Uh, in terms of AI and modeling, we use that in our internal research all the time when we're trying to predict the performance of new chemistries, whether it's for wear or fuel economy or, or anything else, including toxicity. Um, and I think it speeds up the process tremendously, and we've been doing it for a very long time because we do have some large databases around how certain chemistries perform. It allows us to narrow the funnel much more quickly to get to chemistries that we think will be efficacious much more quickly so we can then take them on to real testing. In my company, we still go to real testing at the end. It just makes the process much faster to get to what you think is a suitable solution. I thought you would bring up testing. Is there a way, and I realize this is maybe controversial, but one of the things that we found in the defense industry is testing often is requires over-testing. Uh, so your comments on your testing process. Are our regulations, government regulations, forcing you to over-test? Yeah, great comment. There, there are some places where over-testing is, is a must, right? We, we talked about uh, space flight. We talk about some engine uses. You want to test the most extreme conditions, even if right. they're on the edge of, of reality. I think when it comes to the use of chemistry, uh, one of the things we would recommend, again, is that risk-based, not hazard-based, to understand the hazards of the chemistry, but then to really understand the risk of how it is used in its process. In many cases, the chemistries I deal with are used only in industrial processes. They're not ever seen or touched by normal homeowners. Dr. Gross, any comments? Um, with inside of Boeing, risk-based testing is, is definitely we take on, and that's all done in that framework of the regulations of which we have to comply. So FAA, within their, their guide work, um, you know, I mentioned in my written or my oral testimony about um, durable materials, and we have to demonstrate that to the FAA um, for type cert for the life of the airplane, so whatever that performance envelope is. Um, and so sometimes that may look like over testing, but um, it's it's a requirement, and it's 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 really important for us to get that right. Well, the president is pushing the defense industry now dramatically to produce faster. So I think this is one of the areas where we're going to have to accept more risk. Uh, I want to go now to review. Uh, this may be for you, uh, Dr. Meberg, uh, the the review using AI. Do you have any comments on the po potential use of AI in the review process? Um, my comments are necessarily a bit speculative. I have the same hopes for AI and its speeding up of things that everybody else does. I will note that the Office of Research and Development developed the whole field of computational toxicology, which actually has been used to try to expedite reviews over the, the previous thing by looking at uh, structure analysis comparisons to be able to make inferences about how new chemistries may relate to the chemistries of some of the existing chemicals. So the agency has been committed to try to speed those things up and reduce the need for, say, animal testing and things like that for many years and looking at chemicals. Um, as to, I, I hesitate to make predictions about exactly what AI will do in this field, but I think the agency, and this is me speaking only on, for myself, I would think the agency would be open to opportunities to help 
use the AI to help um, make those kind of comparisons. Well, I've heard too few comments in, in my mind about AI in this field because you have the data sets, you have the, uh, you have the known structure. It looks to me like this is a wheelhouse of chemistry. Chairman, I yield back. 